Hello, and welcome to the tutorial series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. In this tutorial, we show how to publish web services. Note that tutorials are not meant to be comprehensive training modules. Instead, they demonstrate a very basic use case that can be built quickly and easily. However, the Community Edition Knowledge Base contains additional information that will help you learn more and go deeper. Additional resources in the Knowledge Base include resources used to build the tutorial, such as data virtualization archive files, data source files, and a document version of this tutorial. Additional information, including documentation and training materials. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining publishing and outlining its importance in data virtualization projects. Next, we demonstrate the basics of publishing web services. Finally, we summarize the contents of this tutorial. Let's begin by discussing what publishing is and why it is important for data virtualization. Data virtualization developers use TDV Studio to create virtual views, procedures, transformations, and other types of resources. By default, these resources are not accessible to data consumers. Publishing is the act of making TDV resources accessible to authorized consumers. We can choose to publish resources as virtual databases, as web services, or both. Virtual databases can be accessed by any client tool that connects via JDBC, ODBC, ADO.NET, or OData protocols. Published web services are accessible via REST and SOAP protocols. In this introductory demo, we will concentrate on publishing procedures, which is the most common use case for publishing web services. However, many other types of resources may be published, including views, transformations, tables from physical data sources, and even entire physical databases. Publishing is an essential capability for data virtualization because it makes virtualized data accessible to data consumers. Virtual databases and web services provide a simplified front door to all data in the enterprise while hiding the complexity of many disparate physical data sources in the enterprise. Publishing web services is important because it presents data in a format that can be accessed via SOAP and REST protocols. These are extremely popular access methods, especially for web developers. Next, let's walk through the basic steps of publishing a web service. Here is the business problem we illustrate in this tutorial. TDV developers access many different physical data sources to produce federated virtual procedures and views. However, these resources are only accessible within TDV Studio development environment. They are not visible to data consumers using other data visualization tools. To make these virtual resources accessible to data consumers, we will publish them as web services. They can then be accessed by any client connections using REST or SOAP protocols. Now we're ready to begin. We're going to publish the stored procedure named lookup product from the TDV examples folder as shown here. But why are we publishing a stored procedure? Why not publish a view? After all, it is certainly possible to publish views as web services, and in the companion tutorial on publishing virtual databases, we did choose to publish views. The answer lies in best practices for web services. In most cases, it is not good practice to publish entire database tables as web services because they might be hundreds of millions of rows, and web services over HTTP are generally not aimed at such use cases. Stored procedures, however, can accept input parameters which can be used to filter results. Therefore, a common practice is to wrap a view within a stored procedure using one or more input parameters that force the data consumer to filter data requests. That's exactly our approach here. We use a single view, but add a WHERE clause filter that is driven by a required input parameter to the procedure. Right-click Lookup Product and select Publish. As the dialog box shows, I have already published several web service endpoints. 
I could publish to one of these, but for this example, let's create a new one. Click Web Services to indicate that you do not want to use an existing endpoint. Now click Add Composite Service. Give the service a name. The new Web Service endpoint is created. Optionally, you can change the name of the published procedure. Click OK and the procedure is added to the endpoint as a new operation. Now you can open the published procedure and examine its column names and data types. Let's get some data. Open the published endpoint. Notice that both SOAP and REST services are automatically created. Click the REST tab. On the Operations pane, select the operation we just published. Scroll down to Endpoint URLs and double-click the URL for HTTP XML. This places the URL on the clipboard. Now paste the URL into a browser. Note that the parameter template appears in the URL. The filter we must enter is represented by the text in curly braces. Replace the template text with a value and authenticate. The filtered result is returned. Our published web service is working correctly. Let's publish a second procedure in order to show how to add a web service operation to an existing endpoint. Create a new SQL script in a folder of your choice. Give the script a name and create any logic you like. To save time, I have simply pasted in the script from our previous example and changed the name of the procedure. Right-click the new procedure and select Publish. Now, instead of creating a new endpoint, simply select the one we created earlier. Optionally, change the name for the published procedure and click OK. The new procedure is added to the endpoint. You can open it, examine it, and test it, just as we did before. Finally, let's see what happens as we make changes to published resources. Open the procedure you created for the last example. Don't open the published procedure in the web service endpoint, but open the procedure you created in your development folder. Change the procedure as shown here and save your work. Now test the published web service operation as we did before. It returns multiple rows now, indicating that our change from an equals condition to a greater than condition was automatically propagated to the published resource. No republish is required when changes are made to underlying resources. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this tutorial. Data virtualization developers use TDV Studio to create virtual views, procedures, transformations, and other types of resources. By default, these resources are not accessible to data consumers. Publishing is the act of making TDV resources accessible to authorized consumers. We can choose to publish resources as virtual databases, as web services, or both. Virtual databases can be accessed by any client tool that connects via JDBC, ODBC, ADO.NET, or OData protocols. Published web services are accessible via REST and SOAP protocols. In this introductory demo, we concentrated on publishing procedures, which is the most common use case for publishing web services. However, many other types of resources may be published, including views, transformations, tables from physical data sources, and even entire physical databases. Publishing is an essential capability for data virtualization because it makes virtualized data accessible to data consumers. Virtual databases provide a simplified front door to all data in the enterprise while hiding the complexity of the many disparate physical data sources in the enterprise. Publishing web services is important because it presents data in a format that can be accessed via SOAP and REST protocols. These are extremely popular access methods, especially for web developers. As you work with publishing in TDV, keep these key takeaways in mind. You can create as many web service endpoints as you like, 
and you can add resources to any of them. When you change an underlying resource, the published dependent resource is automatically changed. After completing this tutorial, you are ready to make your work available to external clients. Use your learning from this tutorial to publish procedures for end-user consumption. Leverage your knowledge to publish other types of resources such as views, transformations, and physical tables. Use other tutorials to learn how to connect client tools to your web services using SOAP and REST. Thank you.